Okay, we're in. Players, welcome to the world of Dungeons and Dragons. We'll be playing 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons today. Now, how many of you have ever played Dungeons and Dragons? No? Good. So, I've been playing since I was a small, small child. I am going to teach you in like less than a half an hour how to play Dungeons We'll be playing Dungeons and Dragons in a half an hour. Okay. Or my name isn't Bill Allen. Now, the first thing that you're going to learn about Dungeons and Dragons is a lot of the things that you know from video games and movies come from this, right? Or from books, okay? So the first thing that we start off with is race. Now, there are a lot of races that you could choose from. This is the player's handbook, so it gives you basic races, okay? I'm just going to give you a rundown. So we have dwarves, right? If you've ever seen Lord of the Rings, dwarves, they're right. stouty, they're hardy, they're, they're strong, yes. Maybe Brian, but I don't know. Well, hold on, we'll come back to Brian. Then there's elves, okay? Elves are like humans, but they, they have pointed ears. They could see in the dark. They have a slightly different way of looking at the world. They're maybe sometimes we think of them as being more connected to nature, okay? Then there's halflings. They are really small, like hobbits. Don't say that Brian Lee's a halfling, he's not. He's a, he's a human, he's just shorter. Then there's humans, we'll get back to them in a second. You pretty much know what they are. Then there's Dragonborn, right? So Dragonborn are humanoid okay. dragon okay. kind of people, right? Um, dragonborn can also be viewed in some ways because of their draconic, their dragon nature. They could sometimes have a different approach. Maybe sometimes we view them as being like slightly less emotional, more like logic, almost like if, you ever, if you're a Star Trek fan or if you, or if you ever watch Star Trek, like the Vulcan kind of approach or the Klingon um, kind of approach, like might be, I don't know. So anyway, there, here's some receipts from something that I bought. Um, gnomes, gnomes are kind of like halflings, smaller people. They can be kind of tricky and stealthy sometimes. Why is everyone so tiny? And well, and there's dragons? that. Dragonborn aren't, they're big. Um, half elves, half elves are half human, half elf, okay? So if you're not quite sure if you want to be a human or an elf, maybe you pick a half elf. They have attributes of both races, can you okay? Be half anything? Sort of. Half orc. Okay, now orcs are typically considered monsters. They're humanoids, but they're, you know, barbaric and they're typically considered evil. Well, half orcs are generally like a hybrid between an orc and a human. So, born out of the coupling of a human and an orc. Some people think that's gross. I don't know. So, half orcs are pretty strong, male or female. They're usually very buff, but a lot of times they face social difficulties, as you would expect, because they're half orc, which is a despised race. Then there's tieflings. Tieflings basically are humanoid, but they have a lot of features of um, demons or maybe devils. I can't remember. But basically, kind of imagine like if you had a little bit of devil blood in you. Demon blood, devil dubs, blood. It's, that's a tiefling, right? So each of these races has different things to bring to the table. But then you have a class. And a class in this game is kind of like what your character does, right? So there's barbarians. You can figure out what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Really good fighters, but they're kind of more primitive. Um, they don't use, like, armor. They rely on their skill in battle and, like, their kind of approach to living, like, a, a rough, kind of rigid lifestyle. Um, then there's bards. Bards are musicians, performers, right? But they have magic infused in their abilities, right? So it's not just like, I'm going to play you a song or sing you a song or do something. Like, they actually can kind of do magic while they're doing their bard powers. So kind of a cool, and they have a lot of different skills and knowledges because bards are people who collect skills and knowledges, right? Mm -hmm. Clerics, I think I explained that to you. That's, they're like the holy um, people. Like they have, they're, they're like magic users, but they use divine magic. In other words, they pray to a god, the god grants them powers because of their faith in their god, okay? And they could fight, they could wear armor, but they're not fighter fighters. Like they're, their primary purpose isn't fighters. But then we have druids, which are also magic users, but they draw their power from nature, right? So nature grants them power. Their, their abilities come from to cast spells and to, to, to have powers that comes from nature. Then you have fighters, which is exactly how it sounds. These are your classic, whether it's a knight or an archer, a fighter is a person who is trained in martial combat, right? Whatever weapon you choose, you get armor, no armor, it's up to you. There's a lot of different ways to build a fighter, okay? You might just be like a master with just knives or axe, sword, spear, bows and arrows, crossbows, whatever. Fighters fight. Monk, 
Um, it's kind of what you think it would be. It's somebody who uses their mind, their chi power, right, to exercise um, their abilities, right? They have certain abilities and they're exactly what you would think a monk would be, like they, they have martial arts powers. Their ability to, to do damage just with their bare hands is, is, can be lethal. Um, then you have a paladin. Paladins are holy fighters, right? So they're like fighters, but they also, like a cleric, they draw their power from a god. So they're not as powerful with magic as a cleric is, but they could fight. A ranger is a fighter who kind of like is, is like a fighter and a druid combined. They have a little bit of magic, they know the outdoors really well, and a ranger can track things, right? They're like really good at tracking and survival. We need one of those. Yes, rangers are also good fighters. They could fight with two weapons, they could fight with a weapon and a shield, or they could fight with a bow. They're archers too, so they're, they're really good at those things. Next is a rogue, and a rogue is kind of a jack of all trades. It's a skill master, it's a sneaky, this is your sneaky guy, right? Your thief, your, your assassin, that's like a rogue, right? So they could fight, but they're not fully armored. So if they get surrounded by a bunch of people, they're probably screwed. But if they have a chance to sneak up and kill someone, they're really good, right? They're also good at like picking locks and like disarming traps and those kind of sneaky, stealthy things. And they're good at stealing things usually too. Sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. All right, a sorcerer is a magic user who draws their power from within, right? Some people believe that they're, they're touched by draconic blood, like they have a little bit of dragon blood in them, and they, they draw their power from within and they cast awesome spells. Then there's warlocks. Warlocks get their power by making a pact with something or someone, right? So think of it as like almost like a witch. Like a warlock could be somebody who draws their power from making a pact with a powerful demon lord, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be an evil thing, but they get their power by making a pact. They're granted powers, but in return, they owe their soul to whatever pact they made, right? Then a wizard. A wizard is the classic wizard idea. Like, you cast a spell with a flourish of your hand and magical words, or you read it out of your book, right? Wizards are like the classic arcane you know, Harry Pot think Harry Potter or think like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, like a wizard, that kind of a wizard. You study, you memorize spells, and then you weave powerful essence into your magic. Okay, so those are your classes. Now to simplify things, we're going to play a, a starter game in my world. I'm going to make you all make humans. Cooper's like, that sucks. I wanted to be a dragon boy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> all right. There's a reason for it. In, in my setting, in my world setting, I make everybody play humans. There are other races, but I, I start everybody off as humans. And then I let your character come to life through your class choices and your background choices, mm -hmm. okay? So when you make a character, you have to pick a race, you have to pick a class, and then on your character sheet, you guys will see how there's like on this panel right here, there's strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. These are your primary attributes, right? And they're pretty much what you think they would be. Strength is your physical strength. Dexterity is like how fast or agile or dexterous you are. Constitution is how much endurance do you have? How much pain can you suffer, right? How long can you hold your breath? All those things are constitution. Intelligence is literally your intellect, your logic. Wisdom is how aware you are of the world around you, how wise you are, how perceptive you are. And charisma is like the force of your personality, right? So if you're a leader, you typically have good charisma. Um, if you're uh, like a monk or a, a, a cleric or anyone who kind of like draws their power from their insight, you would be more inclined towards wisdom, right? Wizards might need intelligence. If you're a fighter, you're going for strength, dexterity, constitution, those kind of things, okay? So we previously did a little test run with this. And at that time, I just, I told you what you were, but I, now I'm gonna kind of let you have a choice, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want you to think. I'm gonna make this, the choice easier. First, you're gonna be a human. So on the top of your character sheet, you'll see class, level, background, player name, race. Under race, just write human. Under player name, write your first name. Do we have to? So your, your character's name is this big space over in the upper left corner. So Yuri might be your character's yeah, name. Yeah. yeah, all right, so you come up with a character name, and it could be anything. Can I have a last name? Sure. Yuri. Do you want to name your character, Carl? 
Yeah. Now, it's not uncommon in Dungeons & Dragons for people to play a character who is totally different from themselves. Like, I've played in games where, like, a boy has played a female character, or a female player, you know, character has played a boy. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. It's a game, so you can play whatever you want. Um, so, the next thing is going to be what class are you, right? Now, Cooper, in the last, like, you know, little run-through that we did, mm -hmm. Um, I think you were I was a, um, a ranger, ranger yeah. right? Do you like that? You like that idea? Yes, I do. I okay, like so you're going to write under class. You're going to write ranger. Um, Rory, I think we had you as a fighter. I think you should be a rogue this time because I think we need someone to pick the locks and stuff like that. I think Rory was a rogue. I think yeah, Max I think. was a rogue and Rory was the fighter. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's up to you. Oh yeah, yeah. Now a rogue can fight too. You could build a badass rogue who could also fight. Yeah, I'll be a rogue. All right, so write down rogue. Heather, um, you had been a druid. Yeah. Do you want to stay with that? Sure. Okay, so you're a druid. Brian, sorcerer? Yep. Okay, Brian like that sorcerer. All right, good. So that made things easy. Now, in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, there's a way for you to pick out the points that you want to do that. That's called a point buy system. So it basically means that you have a pool of points. You can add them to the ability scores, and there's all these rules for that. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in a world where you rolled dice, and fate, ooh. random chance, determined your character. Now, Cooper, you say, ooh, because in truth, it could be dangerous. You might roll really crappy rolls like that, like one, two, one, four, you're screwed, mm -hmm. right? But you also might roll like sixes and fives and have really high numbers. Is it on, like... So it's up to a six where the, that's the highest So I'm going to show you, there's a couple different ways people do um, the, the dice rolling thing in a lot of different ways, okay? So what we do for my game is, because I make all of you humans, it, it kind of limits you, right? Because you don't get to choose all the classes. But the benefit in my game setting is that I let you roll four six-sided dice, and you pick the best three. But I also let you re-roll ones. So Ooh. the odds are using my system for character rolls, you are going to have really high rolls. And that's typically called heroic rolls. And the reason why I give you that is because I'm limiting your race option to human to start with. Okay. So as an example, I would roll this. That's a dope roll, actually. So 6, 5, 3, and 2. I'm going to take the best three out of those rolls. 6 and 5 is 11, plus 3 is 14. A 14 is exceptionally good, right? So we're going to go around and people are going to roll. Now, if I had rolled a 1 here, 5, 5, 4, I re-roll this 1. So now it's 5, 5, 5. See? 15. Okay? So, Heather, there's four dice for you. Now, we could, we could sit and watch each other roll. But what I'm going to have you do is you're going to roll, mm -hmm. and you're going to don't write it into the boxes. Just write it along the side, on the right side in the margin. Whatever your role is, write that down, okay? okay. So we're going to do two people at a time, because I have to witness your roles and make sure you're, you're doing your stuff right. Okay, Heather, go. Okay, so four, five, and two. That's 11, so write down 11 on the side. Cooper, go. Cooper with the mic drop. 15, good, good start. Roll that, mm -hmm. uh, write that on the side. Okay, and then pass it down a little bit. Look at Brian. Brian with oh. the straight threes. Brian, that's a nine. All right, so Rory, you rolled two mm -hmm. ones, a six and a four. Now re-roll those ones, Rory. This could be huge, right? Yeah. That's good. There you go. Okay, that's five, four, good. six. That's, that's awesome. Good. Fifteen. All right, pass the dice to your hey. partners. We both got fifteen. Roll again. Yep. You got to do. You have to have a total of six rolls because there's six attributes. Wow, Heather with Ooh. a powerhouse fifteen. There you go. Go, Coop. Cooper with the um, <laughs> six five two with a one. No, that was a one. That's so a we one. roll this. All right. Six five two and five Ooh. sixteen. Good. Pass 16. them down. All right, go, Brian. Reroll those ones, Brian. So you got a four four and two ones. <laughs> nice, Brian. Fourteen. All right, Rory, reroll those ones. Wow, Rory's like the the one rerolling master right there. Six four. Three. We roll the one. There you go, 14, good, Ooh. solid. Go, Heather. Go, Coop. Yep. Heather with a powerful 11, still above average. Cooper coming in with the 15 again. Very, very solid. Interesting. All right, Brian, 13, that's good. Rory with his first no ones with a, a <laughs> modest 11, that's good. How many are we up to now? Three? Yeah. Good, go. 
We roll the one, four, three. There you go, Heather. So, twelve. Coop, that is the saddest roll you've had. That's a nine. That's all right. Nine is only slightly below average. Okay, go, Bry. Brian coming in with the, uh, what is that, 12. Rory coming up, oh, re-roll the one. This could be big. Brian. Or not, so that's an 11. That's an 11. All right, Heather, you're up. Heather, 14, nice. Bounce back. All right. Re-roll the one, Coop. One. Six, four, two, six. six. Sixteen. Cooper clocking in another sixteen. That's that's heavy. All right, Brian, re-roll that one that slipped away. You got a four, three, two. Rory, re-roll that one. That could be Ooh. huge. All right, so Brian, you got a ten right there. Rory's got a solid sixteen. Heather, re-roll the one. Sad. That's a ten. That's not bad. Re Cooper, we roll three <laughs> ones. Jesus. He's got a chance. Oh, wow. Oh, six and Another, a four. Wow. Six, six, four. That's a six. Oh. That's 18. Oh. 18. Huge. Here we go. Cooper, you're a beast. Oh, yeah. All right, Brian, reclaim that dice. I lost it. I'm going to find it. <laughs> you might have to crawl under the table for that. So, uh, yeah. 13. There you go. 13. No idea what it okay. One, two, three, four, so, five, here, pass those dice to Brian. Yo, Brian. Heather, see if you can find that last red dice. Oh, here it is. There it is. All right, Brian, roll the big dice. Let's see if that helps your scores at all. Hey, not bad. Look at that. Cooper's dice are lucky. You got a 14. All right, pass the dice this way. So everybody rolled, and he actually, despite, you know, what you might think, all of you rolled really well. Because you got to remember that, like, average is 10. So how many of your rolls are above 10? Um, Look at your rolls. All yeah, all literally of them, all of them yeah. except right. So basically, all of your characters are going to be above average, no matter where you're at. Okay. Now, where do you place those numbers? It depends on what class you are. Mm. Okay. So for a ranger, for example, Cooper, yeah. you have an 18 and two 16s. You have a lot of choices and two 15s. Good Christ. Um, <laughs> that's just that's beast, man. That is beast. So when you make a human. One of the advantages of a human, because humans can't see in the dark, mm -hmm. like an elf or a dwarf, and because they don't have any other bonuses that help them racially, when you make a human, every one of your scores goes up by one. So when you place your scores, you add one to that for the final score, right? So what that means is this. That 18 becomes a 19. Those 16s become 17s. Those 15s become 16s. That 9 becomes a 10. And if we were to play another race, like different category or different skills would be boosted? It would be totally different, anymore. right. Yeah. So if, if I let you, let's say, play your Dragonborn, your Dragonborn, instead of giving a plus 1 to all of your rolls, your Dragonborn would get um, a plus 2 to Strength and a plus 1 to Charisma. Oh, my okay. God, your Strength would be 20. <laughs> it's so beast. All right. So, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what stats are important to your class. Okay, so we're, we'll go around. Um, Rory, you're making a rogue, right? What's yeah. your highest roll? Sixteen. Okay, so you're sixteen, and then do you have any fifteens in there? Yeah. Okay, you're going to want to put your sixteen into dexterity. So sixteen and plus one because you're a human makes it seventeen. So put seventeen in the big box in your dexterity. Okay. So, and then put a little line, just one line through the 16 on the right so that we know we used it, okay? Cooper, a ranger, it depends on what kind of fighting you want to do. Now, mm -hmm. if you want to be a shooting bows kind of yeah. ranger, right? Yeah. Then you want your highest in dexterity, kind of like Rory. So you're going to put your 18 into dexterity, and it's going to be a 19. So write 19 right. in the box and cross out your 18. Just put a line through it so we know yep. we used it, okay? Heather. Druids focus their power through their wisdom. So your wisdom is going to be important. What's your highest roll? 15. So put that as a 16 into your wisdom because it gets a plus one. Be one -shotting people Brian, with my bow. sorcerers use their charisma, the force of their personality, their will over magic. So your charisma has got, what's your highest roll? 14. So put the 14 <laughs> It's going to as a 15 in your charisma. Okay. So, and then draw a little line through your 14. All right. Your next stat is also kind of important. So rangers need decent wisdom 
if you want to track, yeah, you I'll, need to be I'll perceptive. And fortunately for you, you have solid rolls. So yeah. one of your 16s should go into wisdom, and that's okay. actually going to be a 17. 17. So write in 17 for wisdom, cross out a 16. Rory, you are a rogue. Depending on what kind of rogue you are, you might want to fight with weapons like this, or you might want to shoot a bow and arrow. Go weapons. I got the bow. I got the bow. You want to go with the stabby weapons? Yeah, because these guys can't fight okay. with weapons. Okay, so much. you already have a solid dexterity, which means if you use lightweight weapons that have the finesse attribute, you don't need a lot of strength. But what everybody needs to survive in combat is a good constitution, because if you get stabbed yourself too many times, you die. So what's your next highest roll? So make that a 16 in Constitution. And what is that like? What is Constitution Constitution mean? is, it adds to your hit points. It's how much damage you could take before you die. Mm -hmm. It's also things like how long you can hold your breath, how long you could be out in like cold weather before you get exhausted, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? Constitution is important. We'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. All right, your next stat. 14. Druids don't wear a lot of armor. So you probably need a decent dexterity just so that you could avoid people in combat. So that 14, make it a 15 and put that in your dex. What are you at? What's your next highest roll? 14. Yeah, same thing with you, buddy. So I would put a 14 into your dex too so that you could get some, some um, armor class bonus. And that 14 becomes a 15. Okay. All right, Coop. Uh, what I'm thinking is no one's strong here. No one's strong enough. Okay. I feel like I gotta be the man. All right, well, I'm gonna give you a, a bit of advice. Your next highest roll is a 16, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So you could put that into your constitution as a 17. So you're gonna have a lot of hit points. Right. Do that. What about, what about strength? Physical Do strength? I, yeah. Well, put your 15 into that, and that becomes a yeah. 16. And a 16 and a 17, point wise, are about the same. So yeah. that would be a 17. 17. This is a 16. Should I do that right now? Put yep. this as a 16? And then what's your last stat? You got a uh, 9 and a 15. I like. So your intelligence is about knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're not using, like, your knowledge of history or anything. So you could probably make your lowest stat, that 10, yeah. your intelligence. And that's still average, mm -hmm. which leaves a 15 to become a 16, 16 for charisma. That is very charismatic. That means, like, you, you have the ability to influence people and persuade them to do things that you need them to do. It's a leadership trait. All right, Rory, what's your next stats? Uh, 14 and 13. Okay, you probably want um, that 14 to go into your strength to be a 15, the 13 to go into intelligence to be a 14, and then what's left? I have two 11s. Yeah, so those are both 12s, right. 12 charisma, 12 intelligence. You guys are a fairly charismatic party so far. All right, Heather, what do we got left? 12, two 11s, and a 10. Okay, so you could put that 10 into strength because you're not a fighting kind of person. That becomes an 11. The 11 I would put into charisma. Yeah, and then the 12 becomes what? 13. A 13. Four. Where's your constitution? How many things do you have left? Constitution and intelligence. Yeah, but what are those numbers, though? 11 and 12. Then so put the 12 in Constitution. It doesn't really matter. Okay, that becomes a 13. Yeah. Okay, so underneath each of those stats that you have is a little circle, right? You see that mm -hmm. on your sheet? That's going to be your bonus, okay? So if you have a, um, if you have a, a 10 or an 11, it's a bonus of 0. So just write a zero if you have a 10 or 11. If you have a 12 or 13, it's a plus one. So look on your sheet. Mm -hmm. You have a 10, so write a zero in that little circle underneath it. Mm -hmm. If you have an 11, uh, a 10 or 11, sorry, 10 or 11 is a, is a plus zero. A 12 or a 13 is a plus one. So write plus one in there. A 14 or a 15 is plus two. Sixteen or seventeen is a plus three. Eighteen or nineteen is a plus four. Now where those pluses come in is kind of important. Okay? Those affect your abilities with certain skills or proficiencies, which we'll get to in a second. And they also affect how you do with certain things like combat and your hit points. Okay? Alright, so we're gonna run through how to fill in the rest of that stuff. 
So your first, um, let's see, Heather, you're, you're going to be up first. So a <clears throat> couple things with the Druid. The first thing is at level one, you get 1d8 hit points plus your constitution modifier. Now, at first level, I let everybody have the max. Because if I had you roll 1d8, if I had you roll your hit points, for example, and you rolled a two, that would suck. That means like somebody with like a knife could kill you in one hit. Okay. So at the first level, I always let you max it out. So you have eight. What's your constitution bonus? One. Okay. So you have nine hit points. So up there, do you see where that, that says uh, hit point it? maximum? Yeah. Write down nine. It says current hit points, and then there's in gray it says hit cool. point maximum. All right, so that's just Heather. That's Druids, yeah. okay? Um, there's a savings throw box to the right of your dexterity. You see that? Mm -hmm. There's little dots next to each of those. I want you to fill in the dots, um, Heather, this is again only Heather, for intelligence and wisdom. That means you have a bonus, a proficiency bonus, when it comes to intelligence and wisdom saving throws, and I'll explain what that means. Under your proficiency bonus, write down plus two. That's up there, proficiency bonus plus two. And actually, everybody can write down plus two for proficiency bonus, because you're all starting off at first level. OK, Heather, um, druids have certain skills. One of those is the ability to use an herbalism kit. So in your bottom left corner here, mm. it should say other proficiencies. Yeah. Write down herbalism kit. That's Herb, H-E-R-B-A-L-I-S-M, kit. You also have skills, OK? Um, you get to choose two. There's Arcana, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Nature, Perception, Religion, and Survival. What's your wisdom? Uh, you probably have the highest wisdom. So perception needs to be one of yours. So on this list are your proficiencies. Find perception and put a fill in the circle next to it. Now. When you have a proficiency bonus in something, it means you add your plus two and the appropriate uh, skill. So next to perception, see how in parentheses, what does it say? Wiz? Wisdom, yeah. So what's your wisdom bonus? Five. Yeah, so yeah, your total is five. It's yeah. plus two, plus three is plus five. So write down plus five. OK, perception's crucial because it's your ability to spot things. Another thing you might want to take would be either nature or survival or insight. Insight is to kind of tell whether people are lying. Survival is your basic ability to survive in, in the outdoors. Nature is your knowledge of nature, plants, and animals. Mm. Now, there's not a good, I mean, there's a good chance that he might take nature and survival because he's a ranger. He has yeah. similar overlapping skills. So maybe because you have a high wisdom, you would take, although he does too, so either one of you might be good with that. But here's, here's the thing. When you make a D&D &D party, sometimes it's good to plan ahead so mm -hmm. that you don't have the same skills. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Because then you're like, We're, we can only do this. So why don't we make an agreement? You, you might choose perception. She might choose perception. But both of you don't need survival. Because if you're working mm -hmm. together, he could help with survival. And maybe you help with nature or insight, right? Okay. So um, let me see if a ranger, a ranger, Cooper might have a lot of the same skills to choose from. But he might choose different things, too. So as a ranger, he gets to choose from basically almost all the same skill sets that you get to choose from. And he gets three. So Cooper would probably, but you also want to be stealthy, don't you? Yeah. OK, so why don't you let Heather handle the perception and insight stuff? Okay. So why don't you take insight as your second one? Okay. And it's going to be the same bonus, because you have a strong wisdom, OK? So that handles your, um, your skills, OK? You're going to start off with some basic equipment, all right? And we'll get to that in a second. So you get a weapon, um, which we'll write that down in a minute. You get leather armor, you get an explorer's pack, and you get your druidic focus. And you also get some spells. We'll get to that in a second. Um, Brian, your character is a sorcerer, yeah? Yep. So we're going we're gonna to build you out real quick. And then we'll come to this side of the table. And by the way, once your characters are made, the game flies. Like, this is the most kind of boring part um, because you have to kind of go through this. So, Brian, sorcerers have a little bit less hit points. So they start off with a six. So what's your constitution? Uh, 13. 
Okay, so you have a plus one bonus, right? Yeah. So you have a total of seven hit points that you're going to write into that box. Heather, you can show them where that is. Okay. Um, so, Brian, your, your saving throws, which is to the right of your dexterity in that box, you're going to pencil in the circles for constitution and charisma. And what that means is you're, those are your saving throw abilities. Okay. Now, you get skills, Brian, that are a little bit different because you're a sorcerer. Um, you would have knowledge in arcana. So what's your intelligence? Uh, 14. Okay. So that gives you a bonus of two. So um, go ahead and, and circle in the dot next to arcana on your proficiencies, and that would be a total of plus four. And your second one, I'm, I'm going to suggest, well, you have several options, but you have a high charisma, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you might want to choose either deception, which is like kind of your ability to lie to people and have them believe you, or persuasion, which is your ability to like persuade people to do what you want nicely without lying. I feel like Rory should, Rory should go for uh, deception because he's kind of like this. Because he's a guy. rogue? Yes. He's a, yeah, and you should but persuade. Ryan has a high charisma, so he could, he could choose either direction. What do you think? I say persuade. Persuasion, yeah. Okay, so persuasion. So that is your charisma bonus plus your your uh, proficiency bonus, right? Mm -hmm. What's your charisma bonus? Uh, plus two. Okay, so you have a total of four on that. Okay. All right, and like Heather, um, you are a spellcaster, but you don't have any armor. Um, you're going to rely mostly on your spells for attacks and things. All right, so... Brian, you get a couple other things like spells, but we're going to come back to you. Um, you start off with 10 hit points. What's your constitution bonus? It is plus 3. So you start out with 13 hit points. Write that on that mm -hmm. line right there. Hit point maximum 13. That's pretty beefy. Um, your saving throws are strength and dexterity. So put a black dot next to strength and mm -hmm. dexterity. You get three skills. So yeah. um, probably... Perception, that's to spot things. Stealth, yeah. to sneak around. And survival, to survive out in the wilderness. So okay. you're going to put a dot next to each of those three things. Perception. Uh, perception is... It's alphabetical. Oh. Perception, mm -hmm. and then stealth. Stealth. And then survival. Okay, so the add up on that is this. See how it says perception and then in parentheses wisdom? Mm -hmm. So you take that plus three, plus your plus two, and that's plus five. <coughs> What's your next one? Stealth? Stealth. That's your beefiest stat, right? You got a plus four. So that's uh, plus four, yeah. plus two, that's a plus six. That's huge. And same, uh, what survival? Uh, wisdom. Okay, so b you're back to uh, plus, plus three, three, plus two, plus, two, two. plus five. Yep, plus five. Yep. Okay, so there you go. That's your skills. Um, now, typically, the funny thing is, is all of you guys kind of are light armor people. So... You want to be able to move around easily mm -hmm. and get around, and you use very light armor. We'll get to that. And your weapon choice, did you decide that you wanted to do Yeah, more of an archery. Bows? Okay, so we'll get you equipped in a second. All right, so the bell's about to ring. So we, we've constructed most of your characters. What I'm going to do is collect your character sheets now, and I will write in um, so that we're ready for tomorrow. I'm going to write in all the equipment that you need, right? Mm -hmm. So. Tomorrow you'll have your armor, your weapons, and your spells. And I'll briefly go over how all that stuff works, and then we will start playing the game. All right. So stay tuned and join us tomorrow for our first adventures in Lion's Dungeons. That's so stupid. I have to come up with a good name for this.